Cook is now in the very center of the world of fiber art. It was in the early 70s that she began to create huge undulating tapestries that were unprecedented in their optical effect. Since then, she continues to amaze and delight with her unusual weavings, all done here at her studio and home in Berkeley, California. I'm Barbara Lee Diamondstein for Handmade in America. are made by an intricate technique that requires great patience and skill. You'd imagine they must and should be handled delicately. Yet their fate in Leah Cook's creative hands is first to be woven, then pressed by heavy rollers, and finally pounded by hammers. Only then are they ready for her to carefully paint their surfaces. I'm a kind of person who likes to experiment and do a lot of different kinds of things. And once I started working with fibers, it just felt right. I think as a woman, I, I work with textiles. I have worked with textiles, sewed and all of that when I was younger. And when I picked up fibers and weaving, it, it just felt right, and so I did it. When I think of Berkeley, where we are now, two things immediately come to mind. And on the one hand, it's political involvement. On the other hand, it's a long-term vital center for American crafts activities. And you were a student at Berkeley in the mid 60s and early 70s, at a time when a great deal of student activism was going on. Do you think there's any way that that activism influenced you or the direction of your work? Well, I, I wasn't directly involved in any uh, political activism, although it was definitely here and in the air. Um, I don't know, I think I've always been a kind of person that doesn't like to do what I'm told, doesn't like to follow the rules, and likes to look, try new ways to approach a problem. And I think that spirit probably has something to do with the times. Well, let's talk a little bit about the way that you work. You use very traditional techniques to execute even your most innovative ideas. How does the idea for one of your woven patterns develop? I first start with uh, doing a draft. Is that the weaver's sketch? Yes, it's like the weaver's sketch. It's, it's on graph paper and uh, I build up an image that I want to use and then this is woven uh, uh, thread by thread into a, uh, a structure and uh, this is like a canvas. So I, I weave a white piece of fabric that's like a canvas with an image within it that repeats and then this canvas is washed and pounded and run through a press and then painted on it. And I paint on it so that uh, you can see the different ways uh, that the light hits the image. Your earlier work looks very much like landscape painting to me. Considering the fact that you studied art, it's not surprising. Was that your intention? Some of the earlier work is like a landscape. Uh, it's a textile landscape, though, as though you laid a sheet of uh, fabric over a woven structure and, or some kind of under, understructure, and this fabric gave the indentations of a landscape. So it's what I call a textile landscape rather than a conventional landscape. The earlier technique, I used uh, polyurethane foam in, in the set that's been spray painted. and uh, it's cut with scissors and shaped and then put into the weft and then pounded down with by hand with a fork. No, it's just right. The weaving is not something you can do from a design. You put one thing down and the next thing is built on that and built on that and built on that, so it's a decision-making process all the way along. I could do things without ass assistance, but I think it's very helpful in terms of the fact that it's very time-consuming work, extremely time-consuming and extremely physical. And to be able to uh, get some help with this burden, I think, is, is really important. You're always 
searching for new ideas in your experiments. But the process of weaving itself is so complicated that I wonder if you've ever felt constrained by it or by the same token, have you ever found those limitations themselves to stimulate your ideas? I think that I, I do put uh, a number of limits. One, I work with the loom and I work with a specific material. I like certain limits and within that I think I have a lot of, of, of freedom. I think you're right, it gives me more freedom to explore when I set certain limits for myself. I like the structure of we weaving, I like, as I said before, I like the way that, that it's built up, that the image is in the structure rather than on the structure, it's built in to the weaving itself. Uh, but I also need times when I can work very spontaneously and, Im and immediately with the surface and that's of course involved in the painting and the, the pounding and that aspect. So I get, I like the balance of both aspects. A lot of control, a lot of structure and then a lot of freedom to balance that. The physical connection with the material is very important in your work. What is it considered unusual and perhaps even a bit disrespectful to take a textile off the loom and wash it and hammer it and pound it and then even finally paint it? Um, yes, I, I think so. I, I kind of like that idea. Uh, especially a weaving which is supposed to be so uh, precious in a way. And I like the idea that that I use weaving, I'm interested in the structure, but it's only, it's only part of the process for me. And uh, I, I'm very, as I said, you said, I have a very physical connection with my work. No matter how I work, I always end up doing something that's very physical with it. Very direct, like in this case I use hammers right on the surface to mold the surface. Um, and I feel it is disrespectful in a way to the materials, but I also feel that What's most important is the ideas that I'm trying to get across and that I want to use any materials or any process that will help me uh, get my ideas across. Well, the interlacing of threads that I'm looking at that is just behind us appears to be a heavy white rayon thread. Just what kind of thread is it? It's very unusual, I think, for weaving. Yes, it's, a, um, it's used in, uh, in making of tires and it's an industrial automobile type of rayon. Tire? Yes, Truck automobile tires. tires, yes. And uh, I've had it plied up to this heavy size, uh, especially for my purpose. And I like this material because it, it, it's pliable. When, it wa when it's washed, it shrinks and you can pound it and form it. The pressed weave surfaces are these weavings that I do that are uh, made from this rayon material uh, with a small repeat image. After the weaving is done, it's taken off and it's washed for quite a long time. And the, and the yarn shrinks and becomes very um, soft. And then it's stretched out and run through a press which flattens all the fibers. So the structure is still there, but it distorts the fibers by pressing it flat. And after that's done, I, I either dry it and paint on it, or I use hammers to alter the surface further. The hammering does somewhat what the painting does, and that is that it, you have the same image in the canvas, but as you move across it, it appears in different ways, and the hammering changes the level of the surface and gives it, uh, makes the light uh, react differently on it, so that as you move across or as you look at the piece, you see these different faces within the same piece. What about color? How do you go about selecting color? Is there such a thing as a weaver's palette? Well, I work with color rather intuitively, but one thing about weaving is that color, the color of a weaving is always made up with particles of color because the threads are always crossing one another. And so, it, so the color is generally blended all the time. So you use particles of color that build up a field of color. And I think that I, in my painting, I draw on this especially in the pieces where I'm, I'm working with painting the individual threads. What kind of paint do you use? 
Well, I use a combination of things. I use dyes, for one thing, which allows a lot of the reflectiveness of the material to come through. But I used to also use anything. I use acrylic sometimes. I use um, whatever, again, whatever I need to use to do what I want to do with it. Recently, you've been looking at textile collections from museums in England and in France. How important is research to your own work process? How important is the entire history of textiles to what you create now? I think that uh, the, the research into textiles, I was recently uh, in Lyon doing some, some research on Jacquard textiles. Um, I think that it's, it's very important, maybe in a, in a non-specific way, but just as art history is important to the study, to the contemporary painting and, and, and sculpture, so is the history of textiles very, very important to textiles and art. And when you're in school and you take art history, you don't generally get um, textile history. Uh, it seems to be a sep separate subject, but it's a very, very important resource um, because, of course, textiles have been done all the way through the ages, and for the most part, for most of the time, uh, textiles and um, art were together. There wasn't this separation between textile history and art history. Recently, you've acquired actually that beautiful piece of machinery right over there, an antique jacquard loom. How and where did you get it and what do you intend for its use? Um, this is a, a, an old jacquard loom or a, a jacquard that goes on a loom that was uh, that I purchased uh, in Lyon, France, which was the old silk textile industry um, from the Middle Ages on. And I'm very interested in in using this piece of machinery and adapting it to my work. Mm -hmm. um, the jacquard was a uh, precursor to the computer. It was really like the first computer. Uh, you have cards and uh, you punch out your design. The thing about a jacquard is that you can operate every thread separately, so you can create any kind of image that you want to. And uh, so I'm trying to adapt this to my work. These are um, graph uh, designs for the jacquard uh, mechanism, and um, each one of these squares is filled in square by square. Uh, to the, the image that I want. And then on each line here, um, one of these cards is punched for each one of these lines. And then it's put, um, and this is the fabric that, that's, that's created from this. So you can see how many fine threads go into making up this fabric. And then the cards are put on the loom here. Or, uh, this is the jacquard mechanism here. And these hooks, the cards are red, and these hooks are lifted up. And of course, lift the threads up, and this is the fabric. What will the jacquard permit you to do that other looms do not? It will permit me the flexibility to, uh, of the image. I can, I, can, I can choose any kind of image that I want to put into my canvas before I paint on the surface. Your work explores the optical effects of woven structures. If you look at the finished tapestry, you can see the depressions and the multi-layers mm -hmm. that actually relate to the underlying structure. And then the surface image itself seems to create an illusion all of its own. Is that what you have in mind? I think that I'm, I, I do use illusion in my work. I don't think it's the, it's the primary point of which it's about. Um, what I'm interested in is when you look at a textile and it moves in space and light hits it in different ways, uh, you see what I call different faces of the same surface. So even though you have the same image, the way that you look at it, the way the light hits it, you see it in different aspects. And that's what I'm trying to capture within the work. So that some of it is illusion, and yet, as you, it, and yet it's real. It's based, it's based very substantially within the textile. Leah Cook is full of surprises. Her works fool the eye and create puzzles for the mind. And some of them were unraveled for us in a rare visit to her warehouse, her space for living and working here in Berkeley, California. It is here that her linear landscapes, her stuffed and pressed weaves are made. Here that her ideas originate and evolve. Ideas we've learned 
are as important to Leah as her execution. And she manages both with a sense of scale and invention that is quite remarkable. I'm Barbara Lee Diamondstein for Handmade in America. Mm -hmm.